Welcome to the glass house. I thought I would in this video just talk, I'll make it quite a short one I think, but talk about whether or not to have electricity running to the uh, to your glass house or not. It's entirely uh, up to you. Unlike light and water, it's probably one of the non-essential uh, services in that you can quite uh, well function with a glass house without uh, electricity running to it. Um, lots of people do that and they use the um, their space as a season extender to uh, get things going earlier in the spring and to um, you know allow them to extend the season uh, and avoid the earlier frosts uh, in the autumn. Um, so there's actually nothing wrong with running uh, your glass house without any electricity uh, at all. Uh, and I guess whether you want to put it in or whether you decide to put it in or not, very much put it in or not, very much depends on what you're going to use the glass house for because, um, you know, using it as a space, like I say, to extend the seasons, it's absolutely fine not having it. If you are a hobbyist and uh, want to, um, use your greenhouse for different or other things then potentially it would be worth you getting uh, uh electricity in but obviously that comes with a cost not only installation costs but also uh with running costs as well and with the price of electricity going up and up um and you know and due to go up uh you know fairly substantial amount this year then um you know that's something that you need to uh, the, the, the running cost is something you need to consider. Um, I can't say what your running costs would be because they would very much depend on whether, you know, what size of glass house you have, what provider you have, what tariff you're on, whether you insulate uh, or not. Although, of course, you don't need to heat uh, with electricity. You can just light, and I'll talk a bit about that uh, in a minute. Um, but I decided to have this new glass house uh, extended, uh, extended, uh, uh, I decided to have the new glass house uh, with electricity. Um, it's right down the end of the garden. We're about 160 feet away uh, from the house. I'm trying to show you up there. Um, but there was already electricity down the end, because down this end of the garden, because uh, we used to have a light uh, under a pergola down here. So that was, there was no cost to getting the electricity down here at all. Um, and depending on how far away from the house you are, there would obviously be a cost uh, to that. Um, I paid in the end, um, it was about 480, 450 pounds, something like that, um, which was a day's work from an electrician. And I, I would say it's worth having an electrician install it. Um, so a day's work plus the cost of two double sockets there. So I've got four sockets in this part of the glass house. There are two more sockets down behind the sofa, down there. Um, and then if we go through to the other section, through here, uh, there are no, uh, two double sockets here. So there are four sockets in this area in total as well. Um, so that 450, 480 pounds was a day's work. Um, you can see the lead, the electric cable there. It goes round the back of the glass house and comes in uh, through the next section there. So that 450 pounds was for uh, the day's work plus all the parts with the exception of these three uh, lights. There's one in here and I can show you, if I don't know if you can see, there's two in the next section on one there in the middle and one at the very end there and at the moment they're above the bubble wrap the bubble wrap insulation uh oh and there's a switch outside for the lights as well <clears throat> let me show you it's a waterproof weatherproof switch and it's just here the lights on. So that £450 was for the purchase and installation of all that electric gear except for the lights which I 
uh, paid for myself, and they were about, I think about forty-five pounds each. So that put the co that puts the cost up um, of uh, the electrics, including the lighting, to the glass house to about uh, six hundred. Is that right? Six hundred four fifty, six hundred pounds. Yes. Um, in addition to that, I already had a heater that I bought two years ago. That cost me sixty-five pounds at the time. Um, I bought this Inkbird um, digital thermostat, which cost me fifty-five pounds at the time, and an electricity meter here, which cost me under twenty pounds. Um, and you put your tariff in there. I can't do this one-handed. You put your tariff in there, uh, and it tells you how much. Uh, what was it telling you? How, that's the cost so far since I've had this heater plugged in in this glass house. So it's in pennies. So it's cost me one pound and five point eight p to heat this glass house um, since uh, putting the heater in, and that was about three weeks ago, I guess. I've had it set. It's set at eight degrees now. Uh, here, it's been set at six degrees. Um, since uh, uh from when i set it in when i put it in sorry until today and i've upped it um because this digital thermostat here um was reading four degrees this morning in other words it was it's i reckon it could be two degrees cooler here than where the sensor for this is which is i can't quite see it over the back here um, I'm not really sure where the best place for that to go is, however. Uh, so where did I get to? That was about £600 for the lights and the electricity installation, plus 65 55 20 pounds um, But as I say, I paid for those three things uh, two years ago now, so that's not a recent cost, and they may well be more uh, expensive now. So you're probably looking at about £700 um, setup costs. Of course, you can tailor that. You might be able to do the electrics yourself if you're uh, good at that sort of thing. You um, may be able to, you know, you may want to buy fewer electricity points um, and fewer uh, lights, depending on the size of your glass house. So you can, you know, you can tailor that. Um, would I say it's essential to heat and light it? No, of course not. You, as I said at the start, you can perfectly function without it. Um, but it, what it does do, it enables me to come out and work in here in the winter. Certainly the light enables me to come out and work in here on the, when the nights are longer. And, you know, I can do things because this place is very well lit at night. Um, uh, you know, I've got three lights, although I've got bubble wrap. Uh, I've got a light just above my head, just above us there. I've got a light, maybe I'll see it, sort of there. You know, and I've got the one next door. So it's it's very, very bright and you can easily work in it. So is it essential? No. Um, is it useful? Yes. Um, you know, it enables me to work out here in the dark evenings. And it enables me to grow a wider range of plants than I would be able to otherwise. Kept at um, six degrees, all of these plants so far over the winter have been absolutely fine. The aeoniums, the aloe, the lace aloe there, uh, the gasteria, I think is okay. I may be wrong about that. Um, I've got a load of crassulas there, pelagoniums. Uh, I, I, if you watch other videos, you've seen this before. Uh, some begonias through here, uh, back to uh, bedding pelagoniums as well. Uh, alien cuttings that are doing really well. And then underneath the bench here, and these have all been absolutely fine. Um, not actually, I say fine. These probably are struggling a bit, these Rick Rat cactus, although they could be just because they're very dry. Uh, Christmas cactus, aloe, lace aloe, uh, cuttings. All of these here, some begonias there, and the spider plants. All of these have been absolutely fine so far over winter, some citrus there. So in other words, I haven't had to keep this at <clears throat> 10 or 15 degrees uh, for uh, you know the whole of the time to make sure that these plants survived. Obviously we're not out of winter yet and the next uh, you know two months might make a big difference and I might not be uh, quite so confident at the end. But 
it's you know am i pleased i i've had the place uh lighted and heated yes absolutely i am uh and you know i'm really chuffed with uh the way things um uh, so far you know are are working out um obviously as i said at the start it very much depends on your use and your budget as to whether it is worthwhile um but certainly it, you know i would consider having lighting put in even if you don't want to have heating put in because that would enable you to work uh, on your in your space uh, well into the evening on those uh, you know well basically really from the end of September right through to the end of March um, I guess when the light is very low at night anyway that's it my last um, video was on where to or the best or the things to think about so when you're citing greenhouse this episode has been about whether you should uh, put or whether it's worth putting electricity and light therefore light and heat artificial light and heat in uh, I also want to look in the next video at uh, getting water down here because uh, you know as much as light and heat artificial light and heat aren't necessary water actually is uh, essential and you know when you're as far away from the house as I am here um, you're not going to rely on uh, water hose for that or unlikely to anyway uh, that's in the next episode and I'll also I think talk a bit about the insulation as well in another episode I think that's it from me uh, take care have a good day see you soon